Today we're talking to a man who holds what must be one of the most exciting and demanding jobs in the industry. Certainly his company is the micro-maker of the moment. And with a rash of takeovers and cooperative deals within the first six months of the year, it looks as if Olivetti is pursuing a determined and carefully thought-out strategy. Well, is it? Bob Garrett is the marketing director of British Olivetti. Welcome to the programme, Bob. First of all, tell me this. We've seen the tie-up with AT&T, the Acor takeover, a link with control data and Toshiba. Now, does this mean Olivetti is actually setting out to become a European IBM with a finger in so many pies that it's impossible not to take a few bites of it? And what are the implications of this <laughs> high profile for dealers? Right. Certainly, we believe that we are the only company in the world that can actually take on IBM because no other company has a range of products and the size of financial strength that is necessary to do that job. Uh, Why do you want to take on IBM? IBM have the largest market share in computer business and we believe that we have products which we can offer which are superior and therefore we should bring those to the customers. When it comes down to the image of Olivetti in order to do that, and we're now talking about marketing, selling and how it will relate to the dealers, do you think you've got the image right? IBM is now almost like a household name, mm -hmm. whereas Olivetti was famous at one time for for typewriting. Yes, I think it's true to say Olivetti has been a household name in most countries in the world for a long time as a typewriter manufacturer. For the last certainly four or five years, a larger part of our business has been data processing, but of course it takes time to establish that name in the households. I think in business uh, our name is accepted now as a DP company. Uh, so really it's just in the general public's mind, perhaps still typewriters. What are you, gonna, what are you offering dealers when it comes to the selling of your product? Mm -hmm. We offer, apart from the product itself, which um, goes without saying is far better than our competitors' products. Well, you would say that, wouldn't <laughs> of you? Course. Um, we offer a very good level of support, both local support through account managers, uh, central support through helpline facilities, uh, and our marketing and advertising support. A very important thing we believe is to help dealers to advertise and market the products that we are giving them in the most effective way. So we assist them from a logistical point of view, perhaps telling them the best media to use, uh, the best way to do it, and also helping them financially. What about financial packages, though, in order for them to, uh, to hold large amounts of stock? At the moment IBM are offering financial incentive incentives on, a, on software for a sale and return basis. Are you giving them active physical support in that way? Yes. For about the last um, 18 months to two years, we've been doing what we call a stock financing plan, which basically means that a dealer can buy equipment from us for him to demonstrate or perhaps just hold in his stock and not start paying for it until the following month and then spread the payments over about five months and he pays no interest on that. What about sale and return? Sale and you return... You don't like that really, no. do you, traditionally, because it sets a negative posture when it comes to actually acquiring the stock in the first place. Yes. But IBM offer it, why mm -hmm. don't you? I think basically if you're giving sale or return on, for example, software, the problem is the dealer has got to know all the software he's going to sell. And if you start giving sale or return on 50 or 60 packages, the only way the dealer can manage to do that. We prefer the dealers to know the products they want to sell, and that means they must invest in training, in their own support people, and therefore the actual buying of the package is a very small part. You see this as a, um, as a partnership, uh, a two-way thing? Absolutely, yes. Now you've linked up with AT&T, which is essentially a, a communications group. Um, is it possible that uh, eventually there could be a conflict of interest in the actual manufacturer of products? I don't think so. The agreement with AT&T is something which is continuously being, um, not modified, but being progressed in different directions. The original agreement was that, uh, that AT&T took 25% of Olivetti and a new 25%, so it expanded the financial backing. Don't they have a right, uh, is it a four-year period, to actually buy Olivetti? They have a right to increase it to 40% Which would four years. essentially give them control? Um, no, I don't think so, because the other shareholders are quite large. But so they, they would mean... still be, uh, they would be the major shareholder, yeah. but by no means be able to control the complete functioning of the company. Um, but when I say conflict of interest, I mean, our information is that the M24, which is sold as the PC6300 in the United States, is actually doing rather badly. Uh, what you tell us is that it's doing extremely well. Yeah. So, th whatever point of view you take. But this leads us on to the danger that perhaps AT&T will cut its losses and sell Unix. Now, if it does that, what about the dealers who've invested in that? In the PC, you mean? That's right. I don't think Unix and the PC are actually competing products. Unix is a multi-user system. MS-DOS on the PC is a single-user system. There is always an overlap, but they are distinctly different products. 
And one particular movement we see as being very important at the moment is that our division of British Olivetti that sells our 3B mini computers, which come from AT&T, are talking to PC dealers about selling those products as well. So we consider the two things to be complementary. There isn't a danger, you don't think, that AT&T will, will, uh, will sell out eventually or get out of that market? I think it would be very, very unlikely. It is their intention to become a major DP company. Uh, the other question which I know dealers are absolutely um, insistent that I would ask you is when you're going to go in and sort out uh, a company which you have a controlling interest in, a company which has been the bane of their lives for some considerable time now, and that's Acorn. Mm. Well, Acorn is owned by our parent company, not by British Olivetti. So really, uh, my contacts with Acorn are very, very um, negligible. But, but you um, must know what's going on. As far as the, the UK... At the moment, not very much. Well, as far as the UK market is concerned, there's been no intention for Olivetti to change the way that Acorn work. Uh, the well, don't you think they should? If Acorn are making money, then there's no reason why Olivetti should change their strategy. Well, I, I suspect that most people in the industry would actually disagree with you and say that Acorn, first of all, is an extremely bad product for dealers because their profit margins are cut considerably and uh, because a, a percentage of that has to go to, to the BBC mm -hmm. and that the entire strategy over the, uh, over the launch uh, of uh, their new product, uh, the, uh, the new BBC product, is in fact a complete disaster. Mm -hmm. I don't know the home market machines very well. The only thing I would say on the margin side is that home computers have always had and will always have a lower margin because the prices are much tighter. Mm. And that is why more and more home computer dealers are trying to move up to the PC market and PC market dealers are looking at moving up to the mini area. But what you're really saying, in fact, is if dealers have got a really major complaint about Acorn, and many of them have, that they don't talk to you, they should talk to the United States? Mm. No, they should talk to Acorn. Right, directly? Yeah. And your involvement or your... Well, your we, forty percent in Acorn is irrelevant. Well, our uh, parent company has members on the board of Acorn, so they would receive those complaints. Let's go back to the link with AT&T, which is very important because essentially it opens up an entirely new market when it comes to the field of communications. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about that and the way in which dealerships can actually profit by this vast increase in the communication side of their industry. Right. The original idea behind the agreement was that AT&T would take some of Olivetti's products and sell them in the United States, and vice versa, we would take AT&T products and sell in the UK. Now, setting those up takes some time. Yeah. Um, AT&T have, for example, announced a network in the States called Starlam right. uh, that is scheduled to be available later on this year. Products like that we will be looking at the marketing of in the UK. Uh, but, of course, those are new products. So really, while the agreement started at the beginning of last year, it takes some time for new products to come through to the actual sales area. But do you think there are going to be major sales opportunities which our audience can benefit from by looking very carefully at this entire communications field? Absolutely. Communications in PCs is the direction in which everything is moving. Is it? More and more people want to tie their micros onto their mainframe. They want networks. They want access through electronic mail. There's so much more that can be done, so much more margin than to be made. There's been, uh, it's so rapid, this industry of, of, of yours, uh, and ours indeed, uh, <laughs> that it's very hard sometimes to actually stand back from it and look at what's going to happen in a year's time, because everything mm. seems to change so, so dramatically. Right. How would you forecast, when it comes down to the retail trade, that things are going to develop, advice that you can put over or opinion which can enable our audience to actually profit from their own industry? I think the direction in th which things are going at the moment through distributors uh, will continue and that is that the support that the dealers offer is becoming more and more important because they have to compete with other dealers and therefore the support they give their customer is of prime importance and that is why we believe we must give the dealers the support they require as well. It's also a question really of efficiency uh, in the industry itself, an upgrading of the general standard of service because there's been yes. too many cowboy high street operators and back street operators right. leaping into a fast market yes. and, and you predict now that it's going to actually transform itself, that the good people will be the people who will survive. Yes, or the people that are willing to invest in their future. Uh, I mentioned earlier about the importance of training. Yes. That is going to become more and more important, particularly as communications becomes more used. Mm. So the job uh, with the cigarette dangling from his mouth behind the counter has which you problems. unfortunately still see an enormous amount mm -hmm. of, particularly in the Tottenham Court Road area, <laughs> he, he is going to be a figure of the past. Yes. Bob Garrett, Marketing Manager of British Olivetti, thanks very much for being on our first show. Okay. And uh, that's all we've got time for, I'm afraid. This has been, as I say, the first edition.